So guys, as I was inside sleeping, by 11 p.m., this woman knocked at the door. The landlady knocked at the door. I came out. She said, I should come down now. I should come downstairs now to help them in cooking. I told her, 11 p.m., I can't. It's too late. I'm all over. Things like that. It's not by force. I should come down, join in cooking. As what? We are tenants. We are not family members. You don't have any right to tell me I should come down and join in the cooking. Is this a family house? It's not. The man is so primitive. I refused. The landlady, she started shouting. She was shouting, I beg, I beg, you own too much, you own too much, everything about you, voila, come down, cook, you know it's your duty, we are women in the house, voila, why are you like this, why are you like this, leave my house this night, leave my house this night. When I saw that, she was backing, she was shouting, I backed the door on her. When I was inside, I was surprised. What kind of human being is this? Have you ever seen this? At least I would have tried to like come down, but 11 p.m. I was surprised. Somehow I was scared. Who knows what they have planned to do to me downstairs 11 p.m. It's not as if we are friends. It's not as if we are in good terms. I greet you, you don't answer. You are always angry with me, and now you want me to risk my life. Come down, 11 p.m. to your house. For security purpose, I did not go. The next morning, my husband went to his flat to explain himself. He drove my husband away. Get out of my house. Leave my house. Get out. I will push you out. Idiot. Get out. Uh -uh. That was the day of the celebration. Early in the morning. He just wanted to go there and explain to them that it was late. 11 p.m. Everywhere was dark. But they disgraced him. They pushed him out of the house. When he came back, he felt so bad. Then, in the afternoon, when the celebration actually started, we did not come out because of what had happened. But when they started praying, my husband and I, we came out to join them in prayers. These people drove us back. They wanted to disgrace us in public. Yes, it was a public gathering. They invited their friends and all of that. They were shouting, leave, leave. Ah, ah. I was surprised. So when we got inside, I told my husband, let's leave their house. This house is a problem. So we decided to leave. The next day, I was surprised. The landlady knocked at the door and brought us food and drinks. How can your enemy be giving you food and drink? You drove us out of your house. You drove us out of the party. And now you are bringing food and drink for us. Is that not strange? So in the house, I told my husband, me, I will not eat this food. It is suspicious. You did not even bring the food and drink on the day of the party. He did not. Normally, if you want to share food and drink, it should be on the day of the party. But this man brought his a day after. Very suspicious. So we did not eat this food. Sorry to say, we threw them away. Yes. Later on, he called a meeting that we should reconcile. He has forgiven us and all of that. You angry? You shouting? You back in, no apologies, the forgiveness, uh -uh. it was as if he was up to something. So, 
three days later, the wife came into our flat. She knocked and I opened. She started apologizing. She said, I'm sorry. No verse. No verse say, I come be shout. I know say, no be by force to come down during cooking. I know say, una the like to the mind in our business. No verse. I just the shout. I know me now. Forgive me. Forgive my husband. Ah, ah. I was surprised. This sudden repentance. But I accepted and told her that. We are sorry too. That was it. We were living fine. We never knew that he was still angry. So our house rent expired July this year. Though I told my husband, let's go to another place and leave this house. He said, well, as far as we have reconciled, no issues again. Let's just manage this place for one more year instead of wasting another agent fee. Remember in Nigeria, in Nigeria, yeah, when you are renting a new apartment, you must pay agent fee. If the house rent is like 500,000, you are going to pay agent fee of 200,000. And you pay that agent fee just once. You pay the agent fee once. The next year, you don't pay again. So, my husband was looking at that. If we go into another house again, we are going to pay another agent fee. So, since we were at peace, no need. Let's just manage for this year. Then, July ending, we went to him with our house rent. We went to him with our house rent. He said, ah, ah, you are still paying rent? No. I said I don't want. I told you to leave my house. I asked him, when? We never had such discussions. Even when he was saying, eh, leave, leave. Later on, he said he was joking. He was joking. I never knew that he went to one of his friends that he wanted to deceive us. He wanted to punish us so that we will not look for house, so that when the time comes and our house rent expires, he is going to force us to leave and embarrass us. But I was somehow angry with his friend because he did not tell us on time so that we can start looking for house. My husband said I should not be afraid. It is not done anywhere. How can house rent expire by July? We are to leave July. It is not done. If he wants to go to court, he should go to court. This man gave us lots of problems. I don't want to go into these stories. He gave us heat. Later on, he went to the police station to report us. Then the issue was taken to court. We were summoned. Thank God we won him in court. We won him in court. They told him to give us six months six months to look for house he was shouting over my dead body over my dead body will i allow them to stay in my house six months they will not pay me oh my god oh my god never when he saw that he was defeated he came back home he told us okay okay you have six months now to leave no problem but you have to pay me for that six months I told him, sir, it is not done like that. This is our grace period. The court has given us six months to look for house. We are not supposed to pay you within that six months. So we did not pay him. We had to gather up money and move into a new house. Because of this, this man was angry. He was bitter. His wife, whenever I was passing, she would insult and insult and insult herself, but I don't respond. I know that they wanted me to respond so that they will have an issue, but I did not. There was one day, as I was passing, she just blocked me. How dare you pour water on me? I said, me, pour water on you. When did that happen? When did that happen? I never knew that 
she was looking for trouble. I never knew that. She was shouting. I told her, Madam, I've been quiet. Not because I'm intimidated, because I do not want trouble. But if you want to bring this on, if you want to bring this on, I will get crazy for you. I got angry. But my husband came down immediately and calmed the issue. So I went out. In the evening, when I came back from work, in our compound, I saw crowd. People were gathered. I think the other tenants downstairs were celebrating her son's birthday party. I saw all of them. You know that she's a friend to the landlord. I saw all of them. They were gathered. They blocked everywhere. Then I passed. I did not greet anybody because we don't communicate. I only greeted the invited guests, some of them that greeted me. So I passed, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. The landlady stood up. What is it? What is it? Can't you sit down and celebrate for once? What is it? You are full of problems. The pastor they brought to the party told her to calm down that they are not there for trouble. They should let me be. She was angry. She was very, very angry. Then, on Saturday, I was at home. I was at home on Saturday, filming a video. I heard a knock at the door. Severally, I looked through the hole of the door. I saw the landlord and some group of boys. Because of this, I was scared. I did not open the door. I called my husband. I was crying. I was crying. Landlord is there knocking with some group of boys, strange looking boys. He said I should not open. I should calm down. After knocking for almost one hour, they wanted to pull down the door. I did not open. I just knelt down and started praying. Then they left. I was happy. In fact, that day, I wanted to go out to buy something. But because of that, I couldn't. I was scared till my husband comes back. Then, later on, I heard another knock again. He was knocking again. I looked through the window. I saw him with some group of women. Sorry, not through the window, but through the hole in that door. There's a tiny hole in the door. I saw the landlord again with some group of women talking, knocking. They were asking, how old is she? We are going to deal with her. Things like that. I never knew what happened. I was tempted to open the door and see what is going on because I did not do anything. But my husband told me not to open the door till he comes back because that man could be evil. Then on Monday, when I went to work, they called my husband because of the issue. The man made a big case, a big allegation, a false allegation. My husband called me at work telling me that, ha, huh, this is a big case. The landlord lied that I carried a knife. Oh God, I feel so bad. He lied that I carried a knife to fight them at the party. God in heaven. I feel so bad because this man lied against God and not me. He lied that I poured poisonous water on them, concussion water on them, and I did not. I was shocked. At work, I was crying. I was crying. In the police station, he said, they must arrest me. I must go to jail. If not, he will die. If they don't arrest me, he's going to die. He was shouting. My husband said, what has my wife done to you? He knows me. I cannot hold a weapon. I don't even have the mind to do such. What have I done? Because he knows that that is the only thing he will say that will make me, that will put me in trouble. So I went down to my boss and took excuse. He granted this excuse. But later on, the lawyer told me not to come that day, that the issue is still very hot. I should come the next day. You understand? So 
When my husband got home, he was telling me I was crying, my eyes swollen. I was saying, God, if really I carried knife or any weapon to fight them, find a way to punish me. But if I did not, this man will not go unpunished. He wants me to go to jail for nothing. Then my husband told me that we have to do something about it because the landlord said he has an evidence. He has a witness. And I know that the person he had in mind to bring as a witness is the tenant, Danflo, his best friend. My husband said, okay, he's going to go see the tenant, Danflo. I should give him my phone to record the conversation. He took this phone. The phone was actually recording, but the woman did not know. He knocked at the door. Madam, good morning. Good morning, Olga. What happened yesterday? What did my wife do? She started. What your wife did was very bad. Was very, very bad. She came into the house. She saw a group of people. My son was celebrating his birthday party. She did not greet anybody. She did not greet anybody. She was just saying, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. She squeezed her face. Not even a smile. People were gathered. They were even asking, what happened? What happened? That was bad. That was bad. My husband said, was that all that happened? He said, hey, hey, is that not big? Is that not a huge thing? How can you just come into the house? People are celebrating. You just pass them. Squeeze your face. Eh? Uh -uh. My husband then asked her, so was there a fight? She said, no. There was not a fight, but we are very angry with her. My husband said, so that was what happened. There was no fight. There was no scattering of anything. Nothing, nothing. She said, no, there was no fight. Ah, she forfeit fighters. She forfeit fighters. We for scatter her. We for do this one. We for do this one. Thank God for our life, say. Thank God for our life, say. When landlady, they talk to her, she not say one thing. Thank God, say, when landlady, they talk to her, she not talk, we for beat her. My husband said, okay, that means when landlady was actually talking to her, she kept quiet and went inside. She said, yes. So no fight, nothing, nothing. She said, yes. Then my husband went upstairs, we saved the recording. The next day, in the evening, when I closed from work, we went to station. Because they, like, the timing was like, 5 p.m. When we got there, they were not around. Before anything, we gave the policewoman there the voice recording. When I got there, they were already shouting. The policewomen, they were shouting, shouting at me. We were knocking at your door. You did not open. For what? You are guilty. You are guilty. I said, ma, I never knew that you were police people. I looked through the window. I did not see any uniform. Any uniform. I was scared because this man is somehow, whenever he sees that my husband is not around, he will start knocking. I don't know if he likes me. I don't know. Because I noticed that whenever I'm going out, he's always looking at me, hitting on me. But I never gave him the opportunity because I'm married. So whenever my husband is out, he always knock once in a while. I told them this. So they kept quiet. I played the voice recording for them. They listened to everything. Then later on, they came, the landlord, his wife, as I expected, he brought in his witness, who? The woman downstairs. She never knew that we recorded her conversations. The policewoman said that we should not play this recording until the end of the interrogation. So we are there, the landlord judged, the policewoman told him, do you have a witness? He said, yes, this woman. The woman came, stood there. She wanted to start talking. She was talking actually. She never knew that we already have a voice record where she was saying otherwise. She stood up. This woman, she's a troublesome woman. She poured poisonous water on everybody. She scattered everywhere. She carried knife. They said, really? So that happened? She said, yes. Okay. How come what you said in the voice record is quite different from what you are saying now? She said, how? Which voice record? They told her, her husband came to your place and asked you some questions. 
he was actually recording all of that. Eh, eh, not me, me, oh, eh. She was shaking. She was shaking. She was shaking. Then they started playing everything. She never believed. And she couldn't deny because her voice was obvious. At the end of the day, they were ashamed. God disgraced them. The police people told him that he should apologize to me. If not, I can sue him for defamation of character. I actually insisted to sue them, but his wife was begging. I beg, I beg now, nah, now nah, we will not vest. When we got home, they all kept quiet. In fact, I was happy. I was vindicated. In the morning, the tenant downstairs, the husband actually came upstairs to warn my husband. Don't you ever question my wife again. Don't you ever question my wife again. How dare you? So you were actually recording the conversations. My husband did not say a word. When he was done talking, my husband said, are you done? Yes, burned it off. So now we are still at the place, but we have gotten a new house. Thank God. I can't wait to leave this house. This man has done a lot. He has hurt us. He has insulted us. He has lied against me. In fact, he has hurt God, not us. And I can't wait. I can't wait to leave the house. But even after I leave the house, Joseph, his name, he will never go unpunished. He will never go unpunished for lying against me, for giving me a name, a bad name that I never deserved. So my friends, I'm telling you this not because I want to gossip him, but I want you to learn from this. Learn from this.